alaykum dear viewers and welcome to Women's View on Ahl Bayt TV. You're watching Women's View Live on Ahl Bayt TV. Now today the topic is the motherhood, the mother's role within the household. What is the mother's um, role within the household? How vital is the mother's role within the household? Now often the mother's role is undervalued and is, look, is looked upon in negative light. It's usually not given that much emphasis as if it's a role that requires lo, um, little skill or low skill. But in, in essence, the mother's role is actually vital in structuring the family family structure and in instilling the educating, education within the kids. Now today we'll be discussing what is the role of the mother within the household. How do we instill that education within the children? Now we'll be focusing on the mother's role, but this is not saying that the father's role is essential as well. Of course it is, but in the today's show we'll be focusing and adding emphasis on the mother's role. Now, as always, and um, this is a live call-in show, so if you would like to call in with your views or opinions, then please do call in with the number on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. Alternatively, you can email us at womensview at ahlbayt.tv. That's womensview at ahlbayt.tv. Otherwise, you can tweet Zahra Alawi or Ahlbayt TV. Inshallah, I'll be reading all your comments out. We'd love to hear from you, so please do get in touch with us. So, as we said, today's show is um, the role in the mother the role of the mother in the household. Um, I'm your host, Zahra al Alawi, and today with me is Sister Mahfash, um, Yasmin Mirza. as alaikum. Wa alaikum as-salam. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Great to have you back on the show. And it's just, a, it's an amazing topic to discuss yeah. because I think it's vital. You know, a mother's role is vital within the household and she is an individual that really structures the family household, the family structure itself and instills education within the children. But you know, as a Randolph, as an introduction, you know, what, you know, in essence, what is a mother's role in a, in a, in a household? That's a big topic, obviously. You can't, yeah. <laughs> in a nutshell, if you're it's sort of like telling me to summarise, um, I think uh, essentially the mother is somebody who nurtures and cares and comforts and she provides protection for her children and her family and all the people that are, that, you know, are special to her and all the people that she loves. Um, a mother's role is to create, not to destroy. Um, it's most definitely to provide as much love, care, attention, food, <laughs> mm. obviously, to her family. Um, and I think she f plays such an integral part in forming the children or the child's character um, from when she conceives the baby even, mm. you know, depending on um, what she is reciting and reading. Surah so, Al-Maryam, uh, if she it has been said in the hadith, if she recites that every day when she is expecting a child, the child will, inshallah, have a very good character and be noble because the child's upbringing starts from when it's in inside of her and it's the soul that's connected to the Creator. So we want to purify the soul and make it as pure as we can from the moment that uh, entity is conceived. So, um, you know, the mother plays uh, right from the moment she conceives that child to the point of when that child is um, grown up. Um, you know, th there's a verse in, in the Holy Quran, uh, it's uh, Surah Al-Ahqaf, which is chapter 46 and ayah, uh, verse number 15, and it says that, um, and we have enjoined you on man doing of good to his parents, with trouble did his mother bear him, and with trouble did she bring him forth, and bearing of him and the weaning of him was 30 months until when he attained his maturity. So, you know, we have to, in today's society, think about how can we, how can the mother bring up a child in such a way that when that child grows up, they can actually repay this debt to their mother. And obviously to the father, because we're talking about the mother in this particular, and this, this surah refers to the mother in particular as well. Amazing, because it really does start from the womb, and it's, yeah. it's, it's amazing how, how much um, influence a mother can have on the child from the womb, because she has that spiritual connection, she has, yeah. you know, she's very connected with the child. Um, now, you know, as we mentioned all these and the recommended acts to read and mm. um, a mother's role in terms of instill, instilling the religious education in the children, but is the mother's role in terms of education or is the mother's role within the household just a religious issue or is it a secular issue as well? 
Um, no, actually, that's a really good question. I think you're right. Um, it's not just religious, because obviously this child is going to interact in the real world and they're going to end up meeting people who are not obviously of the same faith. So education um, being worldly is as important as the religious. So secular education and religious education have to go hand in hand. You've got to have deen and dunya so that you don't... Um, end up, I mean, anybody can just go sit in a cave and just preach and, uh, sorry, and pray and just, you know, meditate and be free of any kind of sin because they're just, but the whole challenge is to be able to come into this world and to be a good uh, Muslim and to be able to interact with non-Muslims as well. And it's your akhlaq mm -hmm. which speaks louder than your words. So your actions have to you know, also reflect. So if you go into a cafe and you meet a non-Muslim and you have to strike a conversation with that person for whatever reason, you know, perhaps you need to move the chair or something. If you've taught your child that there's nothing but Islam, then that child is going to be reluctant to even want to, you know, interact with that uh, non-Muslim. So it, it, by also studying secular education, you can, sometimes it's nice because it makes things clearer to the child that, oh, actually, yes, my, my religion does make sense and it's logical because there's so much written in, in Western history about um, Islamic history, for example. So, you know, it overlaps. Um, and also from other subjects like geography, from a geographical pers perspective and science, studying physics and science, there's so much mention of these uh, things in the Quran. So, you know, it makes... Uh, the, the child think that actually my religion isn't just made up. Mm -hmm. There is a, a lot of element of truth in here. It talks about the planets in the Quran, and you know, science explains that, and mm -hmm. so forth. So um, you need to have both, mm -hmm. especially if you want to, you need to be educated mm -hmm. enough to be able to articulate mm -hmm. what your faith is representing to a non Muslim. Mm -hmm and to Muslims alike. And if you don't educate your children, how are they going to communicate and make other people understand? Mm -hmm. The whole act of da'wah is to un, you know, do that through communication, through your words, through your actions, um, you know, teaching them to... Um, if they, then in that sense, it doesn't, make, it doesn't seem like they're just, it's blind faith as well. You, know? sure. you become a wholesome person because you're well-rounded. And, and Islam and, you know, teaches us to... Uh, acquire knowledge. Mm. It's in, it's very important to acquire knowledge because if you have knowledge, then you can talk to anyone from almost any background about any topic, mm. and you connect, and that's the human connection you make. You have empathy with that person. Mm. Yeah, that's a beautiful answer. It's you know many people do focus on the religious education as well, but I think you're right. We need to focus on. Um, equipping our children in terms of engaging in the outside world as well and being able to interact and spread the religion yeah. in their general society as well. You know, religious education is very important. Um, yeah, of course. But general education is very important as well. Yeah. And you can't have one if you can't have the other because we do interact, like you said, we do interact in yeah. everyday life. Um, I think we had an email come through. Sorry, why? Okay. <laughs> while you were speaking, it just came through. Um, Salam alaikum. As soon as I saw this topic, I had to email in. My question is not so much regarding the role of a mother, but the role of a father. I work day and night for my children, but I do not feel my husband understands the work I put in. He constantly degrades me and my abilities, and I am left feeling worthless. How can someone make their husbands understand the work and value of a, mo of a woman mo slash mother, mother's role in the household? Um, so, alaykum as salam and thank you for emailing in. So, um, her question is, um, how could she make her husband understand, you know, her role and the importance of her role? Because she says she's always left feeling worthless and de de she feels degraded. So how would you be able to answer that? Um, um <clears throat> First of all, I think what I would like to say to the sister is that, and I was talking about this some a bit earlier on today to somebody, is that you can never change a situation because, uh, you know, situations are always there. We, we have to deal with them. It's within ourselves, our thought process, that we, can, we have the power to change. And um, it's about positive thinking. So first of all, you need to stop feeling worthless and value yourself and your worth. And, you know, the, Allah has commanded people to respect mothers and that, you know, Jannah is at the bottom of their feet. And if you understood, if you understand the value of that, your role automatically will make you feel a lot better 
so you will stop feeling worthless because you are worthy of that appreciation. Um, now, the fact that your husband does not see that or does not appreciate it, that's a really intricate topic because it, it kind of talks about marriage and what is the basis of your marriage and was it based on a, a decision you married that person due to the fact they were very religious or was it because of worldly attributes? So it that comes down to a person's character, I think. Um, and like with anything, I think the most important thing is communication. So you need to sit down and have a chat with him and say to him, look, this is how I'm feeling. So before you start anything else, you need to first value yourself and make yourself feel worthy that, okay, um, you know, I am, I am a, a mother and I look after the children and I work day and night. But, you know, maybe the husband's feeling neglected. I don't know. This is a different topic we're going on to slightly. But communication is of essence. Um, if you are, you know, if your Iman is very strong, you will understand your own value and your own worth. And you will realize that anybody else who, ha f who has the same faith uh, and Iman as yours should also value you and respect you. So create your respect and your worth, first of all. Um, and don't overdo it. Learn to say no for things that you can't cope with. Ask for help and speak to him about it. If, unless you sit down and talk, you'll never know what he's thinking. Because there's always you know, two sides to a story. So inshallah, we hope and we pray that you manage to resolve that. Inshallah. Inshallah. Beautiful answer. I hope that's answered your question for the sister. And I just want to say one thing, because I know there's a lot of males that, there's a lot of males that watch the show, yeah. usually. I just want to say that, you know, sometimes it's easy for a man to go about his daily lives and being, you know, not being conscious of the daily task that a woman goes through or a mother goes through, you know, raising the kids, looking after, looking after the household the chores. And, you know, I think sometimes for men, you know, there are men that are very appreciative. For the men that are watching, you know, sometimes it's good to appreciate your wife and, yeah. you know, and to just appreciate that sometimes they go from nine to five at, at a job. Can but, have a long day, yes. Long day, but the mother at home has a long day as well. That's right. After the, doing the household chores, looking after the children. Yeah. So, you know, I think appreciation, sometimes women just want to feel appreciated. So Absolutely. sometimes that's, that's all they sometimes want. Sometimes it's so. a simple thing. It's just coming home and giving your wife a big hug and saying, you know, I know you're probably tired. Can I just make you a cup of tea? Mm -hmm. That's probably enough for a woman to feel, oh, you know, appreciated. <laughs> it can, it's always the little things that can hold more value. It may not be that, you know, it could be diamonds or it might be one of the nice hijabs <laughs> that we may be, uh, yeah. <laughs> have been looking at and seeing. But, you know, yeah, just a little, yeah. inshallah, but li little things, you know, just little things of perhaps like, you know, why don't we sit down and play some kind of game together? Like, I don't know, or watch something that you both enjoy. Um, it, it's small things that bond uh, hum people. Mm. You don't often need big things, and that's what people need to realize, I think, just a mm. bit of appreciation. No, inshallah. Um, I think just well, I just want to emphasize on one point you mentioned communication. I think communication is very impor important. Sometimes people neglect neglect someone or neglect um, appreciation, appreciating yeah. someone is because they're not aware of the situation. I think communication, you can communicate how you feel to... The yeah. spouse and the spouse can communicate. I yeah. think with communication, you can resolve any issue. And, you, and if you speak calmly about it and just say, look, um, this is how I've been feeling. You know, I'm sure maybe you're not doing this intentionally, but, you know, I am kind of like feel like I'm doing everything and I'm always looking after the kids and I'm going to work and all I want is, you know, perhaps you to say, well, can I make you a cup? I don't know, anything, you know, to make you a cup of tea. I'm, I'm going on about tea because I like tea. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like you yeah. said, it's just, it's good to talk about it. And, and it doesn't mean that you're complaining. It just means that you're trying to say what you're thinking and feeling. And the other person mustn't take it in a negative way as well. You know, you've got to think of it as, okay, this, he or she have got feelings they wish to discuss and talk about. Because, again, it comes back and it impacts the children. Mm. And if a mother is irritated, then the irritation shows on the children. Like, we've talked about this in the last few shows that we did, didn't we? That a mother has to be positive in the house. Yeah. And um, she's got to be that role model where, okay... Some women might be thinking, well, oh, I can't cope with it. I, I cannot be that strong. I cannot always be happy and I cannot be smiling all the time. But, and I say this uh, quite a few times, but if you do everything you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your job will become easier. If you say, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah and not really for the sake of anywhere else, you, other people will benefit from it and so will you because your mind will start thinking in a different way and that task that seems really tiresome won't seem so tiresome because you're thinking well I'm doing this for my creator 
So, you know, and that's the love that you need to have, that connection with your creator. Yeah. So much so that you feel that whatever you're doing, it's for the love of your creator, you know? Definitely, yeah. yeah. I just want to say one thing because, yeah. you know, when I, as people know, I'm a new mother, but, you know, since the age of 16, I've had full-time <laughs> jobs. Since mm. the age of 16, I've been out of many jobs. I've worked in mainstream media, Elevate TV yeah. and retail. I've worked in numerous jobs and, you know, at times I worked, I was studying and working at the same time. So it was out in the morning yeah. and returning back 12 at night while I was working and studying. So it was very hectic, but nothing compares to looking after a child and yeah. giving birth to a child, yeah. going through pregnancy, childbirth and looking after a child. You know, when, when, I, had the, when I had my child, I felt like this is this is not a normal job. It's just you know, it's it just it's like it's a big responsibility. Yeah. And you know, working from nine to I don't know when, or working the whole day outside the house it doesn't compare to raising no. a child. And that requires so much work. And it's not just that; it's a responsibility yeah. because th you're responsible for this child and upbringing, the education, um, the outcome of another human being. So we raise society as it is. We raise the That's men. Right and the women of the future generations. Yeah. It's, it's a big responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny because what you've touched upon is really interesting because I think um, a friend of mine earlier on was saying that if women looked at motherhood as a career, that they would probably be more successful. Mm, um, you know, yeah. they would actually, if they looked at it as a career, then probably we'd have really accomplished mothers in the sense that, you know, they would take it as a real responsibility. Um, and it's difficult being, it's not easy, because obviously you're, you're, you are responsible for this other life and for creating this child's personality and for nurturing them and for bringing them up and making sure that, you know, you deal with their issues and you talk to the child in a nice, calm way. Um, and, you know, we have numerous hadiths that say that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has said, you know, to, to not to shout at children when they are crying because they are crying for a reason, um, especially when they're quite young. So the, f the many stages of their lives, the first four months and the following four months, they all relate to something that they are feeling and thinking. And to not get irritated by them because when a baby cries some mothers might get annoyed and irritated but don't do that because you're actually affecting that child yeah. at a very um, critical age you know it may be a baby but it's feeling it yeah. it'll feel your temper it'll feel your anger it'll feel your the fact that you you may not want it so feelings of you know I'm neglected from a young age step in and, and then the child grows up feeling like that it's not loved yeah. so you know and uh, so when you had these to say that love your children because love is what they need you know be kind to them become a child with them um, and it says here that um, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has narrated that the person who has a child should behave like a child with him and Imam Ali alayhi salam narrates that anybody who has a child um, should for his or her training bring themselves down to their level of childhood so if you're with a three-year-old, you know, do things that a three-year-old likes. And in that, slip in the akhlaq, slip in the fact that, do you know who created this um, uh, kids for? They're like, you know, like, they might talk about, you know, who made um, television. Like, who created the TV? And then you can say, well, the TV has been created by a man, a human being, and then the human being was created by Allah, and the brains that have been given are Allah from Allah, and you know, that's how you kind of, you could turn it into a story, and always um, introduce um, the concept of God, and mm. belief, and faith, and um, I think from a young age, you should always use, say, inshallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah, you know, teach the children what they mean, mm. and make it like a part of the everyday conversation, so it becomes a habit, and by it becoming a habit, then they start understanding the concept as they get older, mm. you know. So I think that probably helps them as well. It does, yeah. I think that's a good idea. And I like, I like that well, when you said that, you know, to become, to become like the age of the child. Because I yeah. think, you know, now I have like, I have a seven-month-old. And when I do play with him, he starts <laughs> laughing and he enjoys that. I think yeah. engage, he does engage them. And when they grow up, you know... They remember those things. Yeah, they remember those the things. The early yeah. stages when you bond with your baby and if you show them love, they will feel it and they, they take it all on board. They do. Um, so now we're talking about the role, the role of the mother in terms of within the household but, mm. and educating the child. But yeah. how early on does this role actually fall into place? I mean, you know, when should a mother start educating a child and when does this role fall into place? 
Um, in terms of education, um, the Quran commands us and tells us that um, we should establish the habit of salah, obviously, with your child from an early age. And it says, indeed, the prayer prevents indecencies and wrongs. So it, it's trying to encourage us to ensure that we, when we, for example, when we are praying and um, that we, even though the child doesn't understand the concept, to stand with the child and, you know, do the actions, etc. So that's one form of education. Of course, that's the Islamic education that we're talking about. Again, sitting on the dinner table and um, a two-year-old probably starts picking up and mushing the food. But then, you know, we say, we use the right hand, you know, say mm. bismillah. And, you know, then the little baby will repeat often. And, you know, just little things like mm. that starting the table etiquettes, um, learning, you know, teaching the child to sort of say thank you and um, being nice and kind. And, and of course, a child doesn't know what they're doing half the time, so you have to communicate on their level. Mm -hmm. So if they are throwing a tantrum, then you, you need to stay calm and, and say to them. So that's all part of the teaching. Um, and, then, and then other education could involve things like, I don't know, getting involved in the kitchen with you. So, you know, if you have a son, I mean, because daughters tend to do that anyway. Um, if you have a son, maybe you could say to your, to your son that, oh, come on, we're going to make um, soldiers today. You know, maybe help, he can help slice the toast and dip it in the egg, boil the egg, you know. Mm -hmm. So he kind of understands that even he has a duty to help around the house as well, maybe. Um, and he's helping his mother. So that's, that's the important thing, you know. And it teaches them to respect women and to honor women and to know that, you know, yes, this woman has, you know, the, your mother has carried you for nine months. She's nurturing you. She's fed you. She's clothed you. She's spent sleepless nights. Um, and I say this always. Obviously, father, there are many fathers who do this as well. But again, we're talking about mother's role. So the child has to see that the mother has to be valued and appreciated, not to be taken for granted. So that's another form of education, you know. Um, but, you know, basic education, the woman herself has got to be a right role model. If she's sitting there backbiting and talking badly of other people and making fun of other women, then the child is going to, while it's sitting there, it's going to take this all in. And when it grows up, it will mimic those traits when, it, when he or she goes to school or steps out in the, in the real world and is in a work environment. He's going to want to, like, you know, he's going to take, he or she's going to, they're going to want to, they'll take it on board. So... A woman's role is that she's so integral and so intricate that she's first got to be the right role model herself. Yeah. You know, if a crisis happens, how does she react? The child is going to watch. Mm -hmm. Is she panicking? Is she screaming? Is she shouting? Um, if, um, for example, something is irritating her or she's quite stressed about something, how is she responding? How does she talk to other people? Mm. Is she kind to them? Is she nice to them? Does she make a big mountain out of a molehill? You know, um, how does she deal with problems? So all these things the child takes on as it's as it's growing up, um, and you know, as a Muslim woman, we are told in many hadiths it says that you know we should be kind and gentle. So that starts with your home. There's no point you being kind and gentle outside the house if you can't start with that within your household. Yeah. So you know, and to be modest and to be shy and to be kind of, um, not to be so loud, but, you know, to have a, have a good sense of humor and be lighthearted and not be moody. There are many things, you know, it's all sort of like, if you look, if you look at it, it kind of relates to positive thinking in the real world. Definitely, it's yeah. what they call positive <laughs> thinking. So you have to, positive mindset, you know, um, try and, and see in the scheme of things how bad is the situation. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not. So, okay, you know, then you automatically start diffusing the situation a bit. Um, I think it's very interesting. I think there's a call on the line yeah. and we're nearly going off for a break. So let's take the call and shall then yeah. we'll go to break. Um, Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum, sister. Salaam alaikum, sister. Welcome to the show. Salaam. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that I with both of you that the woman's job is really hard. Mm. Um, and, and uh, you know, I'm a mother myself and I work 24-7. It's harder than any job that I had in my life. I mean, even at night, I have to wake up to breastfeed the child, which means I'm working 24-7. Yeah. And even, like, when the baby's ill, it's even harder. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, with the woman who you know, emailed you to say that her husband doesn't appreciate her, 
I think if it was my husband, thank God my husband doesn't appreciate. Alhamdulillah. But if he didn't, if and if I was in her, if I was in his his her position, sorry, mm -hmm. I would ask him to look after the child for one day yeah. and see how it is. Because yeah. it's harder than any job. It, the woman works twenty four seven to look after this baby. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I that's my advice for her. That's yeah. my advice. Just yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're absolutely him. right. Yeah. Tell him to look after him. Mm. That's very good advice, actually. You're absolutely you right. <laughs> it's definitely, I think sometimes that people yeah. don't. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for calling in, Brian. Um, so, thank you for the sister for calling in. I um, really appreciate it. Um, I just want to say one thing because that's quite sh true. Sometimes mm. you don't, you undervalue something or someone mm. or the, the <coughs> chores that someone goes through until you're placed in their shoes and yep. then you see how much, um, how much work it does get. I mean, yeah. like sister said, um, I, I nurse my child as well and waking up in the middle of the night, yeah. it's a 24 hour job and you know, Hamza, there's many men that do appreciate what the wives go, are going through but like the sister emailed in and said, you know, yeah. husband doesn't understand or she feels worthless because she's not, she's not appreciated for what she yeah. goes through. You know, motherhood is a 24-hour job. And it I doesn't think, end. And you can't switch yeah. off. That's yeah, like, you yeah. can't. Like, when I used to work before I had my child, I used to go to work. And then I come home, I can just switch off for a couple of hours and mm. relax or do what I want to <laughs> do. But with a, being a mother, you can't. And I think that's why it's such a rewarded... Allah rewards the mother so yeah. much because of how much work she has to go through that's in right. raising these children. And I just want to say, many mothers have children. There's many women, I mean, many women have yeah. children, become mothers. But... It's really rare for women to raise valuable, um, educated, well-behaved yeah. uh, individual, which actually contributes to society. And I think that's that's what's yeah. difficult. We are going for a break, so inshallah. Yeah. I know you've got so much more stuff to that's say. That's okay. <laughs> so for the audience watching at home, we are going off for a quick break. Um, please do um, tune in in a few minutes, inshallah. We'll, we'll be back. We're speaking about the mother's role within the household. So please do, do tune back, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> رحمة الله وبركاته.